In the recent Halo Infinite development update, it did focus a lot about on the environment and a lot on the art as well, but it did reveal a lot about the gameplay of Zeta Halo as a world itself, as well as the player's gameplay. So in this video, I want to do a deep dive into the gameplay elements that were revealed in this development update. So stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos and want to see more content like this, make sure you tap that like button. Let's me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe to keep yourself up to date. So let's get right into the content here. So a lot of people have made videos going over everything in this development update, giving you the, all the highlights, but not a whole lot of deep dives and more speculation as what I've seen over the entire of the internet. So what I want to do in this video is do a deep dive into some specific aspects of this development update. We're going to focus a lot on the gameplay elements. That's the gameplay of the world and gameplay elements of the player as well. I did have my own video kind of breaking down everything that this development update had to offer, just kind of give you the TLDR on this. But in this video, we're going to the too long I read so you don't have to basically. So the first thing I want to jump into is the gameplay of the world itself of Zeta Halo. They mentioned specifically in this blog update that Zeta Halo is as much of a character as say a Mass Chief or Cortana or maybe even Ashram that there's so many different elements to the world of Zeta Halo that really tells a story of past, present, and future. But how does that affect gameplay? Well, they mentioned this specifically. We have guideposts we use to ensure the game lives up to being a Halo experience at heart. Beyond that, my team has a number of best practices we use to ensure the design of the spaces and experiences offers opportunities for various play styles and leverages the sandbox in cool ways. For instance, it is not enough that there are roads connecting various points of interest. We want to make sure that there are opportunities for sick jumps. The player can hit when racing along on a mongoose with a marine on the back. We make sure there are opportunities that allow certain weapon choices to shine, opportunities for really satisfying use of equipment options, and opportunities for a well-placed plasma coil to really put a smile across your face. Now we've seen examples of this well, literally within the gameplay demo that we saw back in January, but essentially what they're saying here is that they don't want the world to feel just kind of like a generic kind of place. They want the world itself to affect the gameplay that you have in Halo Infinite, giving you multiple forms of pathing throughout the world, giving you opportunities for some cool stuff to pull off. I mean, we saw plenty of high elevation cliffs that just scream Warhog jumps. Even at the end of the gameplay trailer back in July, we see a Warhog doing just an insane jump, which seems to be kind of off the place where the gameplay demo happened. And it doesn't seem like Halo Infinite's world isn't just going to be like an open ended kind of thing. There's going to be parts that are going to be kind of mixed up between like highly scripted and open world ish kind of stuff stated here on the blog update saying, in some cases it makes sense for design to go first and lay out a space that's fun for combat with an artist following to ensure visual qualities are being met. In other cases, it might mostly be an artistic endeavor that has the world artist creating the space with the designer following afterwards to place any gameplay aspects on top and sometimes it's very tight collaboration between a designer and artist to make the best experience possible. At the end of the day, each experience we create is a collaboration between many disciplines trying to make the best game we can. But when I hear this, I feel like it's gonna try to do a good job of having more scripted, kind of maybe more corridor hallway kind of stuff that we've kind of experienced with Halo, especially with four and five, but having more open ended kind of stuff, maybe something from like ODST with that semi open world experience that was going on there. I think this is really important to know for pacing when it comes to gameplay, that it's not all going to be just open ended, however you want to go about doing it, but it's also not going to be highly scripted to where you activate a story and you go through this path. To me, what this sounds like, we might have some really cool aesthetic scenes that really can give you like an open awe kind of moment. And you might also have some really tight knit highly crafted gameplay experiences with some art to kind of spruce it up a little bit. Just have different kind of pacing to get the gameplay interesting and fun and something 
new or just trying to mix it up every time you go into a new situation. Now to touch on what I said earlier about Zeta Halo being its own gameplay element or its own character, uh, this really kind of makes me feel like within the world of Zeta Halo that there will be kind of like random events that will happen while you're playing. I don't think there will be so many scripted story beats that you have to hit. Though those will be there, I think this kind of hints to much more open-ended kind of gameplay events happening. They can hear saying, there are many missions that will pull you through the golden path of the primary narrative, but more than any previous game, we are breaking down the walls to create a more open play space offering exploration and discovery. What is that odd tower in the distance? I see a smoke signal on that ridge. And Joseph Stain reinforces this statement later in the blog post saying, what's different this time is that you have more freedom than ever before to choose your path throughout the world. Follow a hidden cave system into a well-guarded fortress Wind your warhog through a fog-filled mountain pass, capture a banshee, and fly to a floating ring fragment across a gap of stars. When I hear this, I'm thinking like open-ended kind of random events that happen that are just kind of randomly scripted things that happen within the world. Think of it like this. So we have the mini map that we saw in the gameplay demo, right? The specific like missions that were pointed out saying you need to go there to go do this thing. But I'm feeling like on the way to these missions, you may come across these certain things that maybe just kind of pop up in the world that kind of take you off the golden path to give you some interesting gameplay elements that feel so natural and just random that just kind of happen and it's up to you if whether or not you want to go about doing that now the biggest gameplay element that was revealed within this development update was sharing that you can hold up to three different pieces of equipment I'm sure you've heard a lot of other people talk about that in their videos but in this one i want to talk about a way they could go about doing this because this certainly has changed in what we saw in the gameplay demo. Because if you remember in the demo that you had the grapple shot on you and then once Master Chief went to go grab a drop wall, it replaced the grapple shot. But once the drop wall was used, the grapple shot came back. And it seemed to be on a bit of a cooldown when it comes to usage. Though in one of the screenshots showcase with the sniper rifle, you look in the lower right, it shows Master Chief with actually just two pieces of equipment. I'm getting the impression these are kind of more one-time use where previously in the gameplay demo, it seemed much more like a loadout kind of system. Much more like Halo Reach, right? Where you say you can choose sprint, but as you're playing through the game, you maybe come across armor lock as an armor ability. You pick that up and then that's your new equipment piece. I think they were kind of going with that route of equipment, but it seems like in this one, they're kind of maybe going more towards the Halo 3 style, where as you're playing through the game, you pick up equipment and it's all kind of one-time use kind of stuff. So it makes you have to think more. In this next segment, I want to talk about how it seems like we're going to be approaching missions within Halo Infinite. It's not going to be your traditional Halo experience. It's going to be feeling so much more open-ended and exactly up to the player how you want to go about doing it. But it's not going to necessarily be open world. Mentioned here by Joseph Stain saying, from a distance, it may appear that we are building an open world game, but that's not really the case. We're making a Halo game, a sandbox shooter, where our goal is to make you feel like the most powerful actor in a rich, emergent sci-fi combat simulation. Again, 343 reinstating this is not going to be an open world game, but I have a feeling it's going to work very similar to like say ODST, where you start small on the world and as you play through the game, you can open up at more segments and you can backtrack as much as you like. So for examples of what the gameplay might play out like, they actually directly mention that here in this development update saying, Enemy strongholds can be approached from many directions and there are so many opportunities available for how you take on the challenges at hand. Do I blaze through the front gate in a warhog full of marines and just light the place up with zero subtlety? Do I scout the perimeter and discover a subterranean entrance that allows me to enter through one of the interior structures? Do I grapple shot to a sniper tower, take out the inhabitants, and begin picking off enemies from my raised vantage point? Joseph Staten again reinforces this, saying that what you'll spend time doing is plummeting down a rock overlook into the heart of an enemy patrol, eliminating their leader with a well-stuck plasma grenade, using your grapple shot to pull his power weapon off the ground and into your hands, and then empty the magazine into the rest of the patrol, scattering nearby wildlife, 
back into the burrows. And they actually kind of visually showcase this within this last development update. If you take a look at this piece of concept art of a banished base, just look at this and there are multiple angles that you can go about doing this. Like you can go on any kind of ledge you would like and go about attacking this base in many different ways. We see this exact same base structure in the image with the two banshees flying over. It's the exact same image right there, essentially, from the concept art in the game. And you can see just like, obviously you can probably just go there. Every place you see, you can most likely go there. As 343 mentioned in previous development updates, so this makes me feel like this, the reinforcing like, yes, you can just go at 360 degrees, any angle you like, Whatever way you see best fit, you can go and do that. Which is something we've never really experienced before in Halo because everything's just been so A to B. Sorry, at one point, play through a highly crafted mission and at the end, the mission ends, you hit a checkpoint, probably a cutscene of some sort, and it takes you into a new mission. Kind of like these segmented parts where in this game, it seems like it's gonna be more connected, more flowing. I mean, we've seen that from the cinematics as well, being all in one take. I think we're gonna see a much more flowy kind of gameplay style when it comes to Zeta Halo. Check out the videos on the screen right here. Got a link to all my news and informational videos if you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.